All right. I'm feeling really good today. I'm feeling really freaking good today. I am recording this. It is a Friday uh, and I have a lot to say. Man, my DMs have been lit the F up since relaunching this show and since kind of just getting my ish in order and in my business. And I want to share some of that energy with you today. And what we are going to talk about, what I am going to share with you over the course of the next few minutes, 25 minutes or so on this episode is really the behind the scenes of how I'm doing what I am doing. And what I mean by that is how I am using my energy and my intuition and strategy to refine my business and create momentum. I am giving you the BTS, the behind the scenes of my story and my business strategy as it stands right now. Normally I wouldn't do this, but I'm feeling so called to share this on this show because, oh, there's there's just a lot to unpack. There has been this huge pushback on Instagram, uh, first of all, being on Instagram, period, but also there's this subtext, this undercurrent of people becoming more wise and savvy about the sales cycle on Instagram and the whole kind of like I don't know, cloud around icky sales, selling in the DMs, coaches just selling to coaches and selling to coaches. And there's just this weird energy right now. And my goal is to break it down and basically disperse it so that I can reconstitute the energy to be something that serves me. And that is, frankly, in a nutshell, the strategy that we're using right now in my company. So I'm going to explain all of this over the course of the next few minutes. And I'm just so freaking happy that you're here for the ride. And um, yeah, let's just dig in. By the way, I'm Erin Traffer, digital entrepreneur, mentor, and strategist. And this show is all me sharing my true to life, authentic, no BS approach to business building. And I'm promising at every step of the way to share with you the reality of what it takes to turn a passion into a profit and into a business. This is is permission to leap. All right, episode five and the gloves are off. Here is the reality. I wanna talk about how I'm running a creative business. I wanna tell you the behind the scenes things. I wanna tell you what has been going on. This is all a bit of a thread that we've been pulling since episode one, since the relaunch of the program. And specifically, there's a couple themes that I wanna unpack today. And we'll talk about Instagram, we'll talk about selling in the DMs, and we're gonna talk about metrics and how to measure your success. But here are the kind of the three buckets that we're gonna touch on. How I decide what to post and how I decide how and when to show up. That is a huge question uh, that all of my clients have. At some point in the game, at some point, Pretty much everyone who has ever worked with me has asked the question, well, how do I know what to post? How do I know where to post it? How do I know when to post it? And I'm, my whole philosophy is if you're, that's a question you're asking me, you're actually missing the point. So we're going to talk about that a bit. But I also want to talk about this concept of accountability. Ooh, that's like sends shivers down my spine. Accountability. Why? Why, why, why? Because we are fundamentally feeling accountable to the wrong things. We are accountable to the wrong things. We have put on a pedestal or believed in this mysticism of something that is not truly accountability. So I'm going to unpack that for you. And then I also want to talk about the brass tacks of all of this, which is what we track in my business. Because yes, you do need numbers. And I'm sorry, you cannot run a business without at least, at least one spreadsheet, probably seven or eight spreadsheets. I'm doing the mental math in my head, how many spreadsheets we have. I don't know how many it is. It's probably seven or eight that we track very specific things. And I'm going to tell you what those things are, because all of these will give you a very clear picture, A, of how I work, what it's like to work with me. And I think that's important. If you're listening to this show, you're probably like, well, what's she really like? Is she really like this? Yes, I freaking am. But also it's going to give you a sense of what you could be evaluating in your business and tweaking that maybe you hadn't considered. 
because I'm showing you how it's working for us, how I am working toward my seven figure business. Like I am putting this out to the universe. I just know in my bones, 2022 is going to be my seven figure year. I am not a hundred percent sure how I'm going to get there yet. I have some, some concept, but I don't know. I'm kind of leaving that up to mother universe, but this is how we are going to do it in some way, shape or form. Okay. So let's unpack this. First of all, how do I decide what to post? And I think what I said off the top is that I feel like this question is fundamentally flawed. Actually, I feel like a lot of the questions we're asking are fundamentally flawed. How do I decide what to post? Some of you may have heard, you you may have heard me reference this concept of a content flow. You may have heard me reference that. And it took me a while to lean into that because I worried for so long that when I said flow, people thought that I meant some like wooey wooey, like, I don't know, mystic thing that's not real you know some kind of like spiritual thing and it is a little bit if you choose for that meaning to be meaningful for you Uh, but that's not what I mean when I say content flow I mean flow of a story now let's back up a minute if you have taken my five days to better storytelling program it's a free video class delivered to your email it's fabulous Uh, it teaches you actually the bra- the mechanics of storytelling and what uh, what goes into a good story versus a bad story. So if if you haven't taken that yet, the link is in the show notes. It's also linked under free resources on my website at erintrafford.com. So so go sign up for that and take it. But here's the thing is that the flow is what recognizes that there will be peaks and valleys at the micro level. So within every story there is a peak and there is a valley. There may be multiple, actually, but then also over the broad spectrum. So if we're looking at a content strategy that's supposed to straddle 90 days, right? The beginning of the strategy, we have nothing. At the end of the 90 days, we want to have sold all of our products or sold all of our services or filled up our group program or whatever the hell our objective is, right? We need to recognize that within that 90 day period, there are going to be peaks and valleys. So part of leaning into that flow, which is what that is, literally think about the flow of water, right? It's going to have waves. It's going to have peaks and valleys. We need to lean into that natural state of things. When you become attuned to the flow that is required to meet your objectives, so let's say fill your group program in 90 days, you have a much better energetic sense of what to post and when and how often. So you'll notice now, if you watch me, I go through peaks and valleys, especially on Instagram and especially with my website content and even to a certain extent with like LinkedIn, right? I have a flow. I purposely will turn the tap on higher and ease off over 90 days. And and that's how I decide what to post, right? In terms of frequency and when to show up. The content itself, the content that I'm actually sharing, how do I decide what to put into the world, is directly tied to two things. To two things. My intuition. I tap into my intuition as it pertains to what questions am I being called to answer or what lessons do I have that I can teach to other people And I usually share those rather intuitively. And that kind of freaks some people out because not everybody has that gift of being that tapped into their intuition. So if that's not you, then use number two, which is I tie it directly to the emotional transformation that I am trying to achieve in my audience, not even in my ideal client, because I recognize that my audience right now consists of more people than just the people who are going to buy my program. I'm only looking for seven or 10 people to join my mentorship, you know, in every enrollment period. I don't want, you know, like 80 people to be in that program because it's an intimate program. But I know that at any given time, I'm speaking to thousands of people, not just seven or eight people. So I really take this broader view of what do they need to learn from me? What do they need to learn from me? And 
when I figure that out, I post about that. And that usually ends up being a peak. I'll post a lot about that for like a week, maybe. I'll write a blog post. I'll do a podcast. I'll do a YouTube video. I'll send an email newsletter. Um, I'll post a few things on Instagram, stories and posts and reels or whatever the heck, right? And then I'll go into a valley. And when I'm in the valley, do you know what I'm doing? I'm assessing what happened when I was at the peak. So the valley isn't a low. The valley is very strategic. The valley is what you can look at as a pivot point. Was I aligned? What did I learn? What came back to me when I threw that at my broader audience? Maybe something much more magical started to occur right? So I always look at what to post based on what lessons can I offer to the broadest audience and how am I going to assess that, okay? And I don't, I, that, I, I was going to say I don't post every single day and I don't commit every single day, which brings us to the second point that I wanted to talk about, which is this concept of accountability. Okay, and the reason I want to talk about this is because I was on one, two, three, four, five, five phone calls in the last three days with students who purchased stories for a year within the first week that we made it available. And they didn't know this, but when they bought the program in the first week, I knew that I was going to reach out to them after six months to see how they were doing in the program and to make tweaks to the program and so on and so forth. Because it really is like my foundational program. If you're not ready to work with me in my mentorship, I always say start with stories for a year. It's going to get that flow going for you. At least that's what I thought that I was going to say. And what came out of those phone calls with those early adopting students was that what they love about the program, and I didn't anticipate this, is that it keeps them accountable to their story and to showing up authentically, which is freaking magical. But what that made me really do is evaluate, okay, accountability. What is the accountability that we're all looking for? So many people go out there. In fact, I was quite literally just in the DMs with somebody who lives in my local city here. And we were chatting about this concept of posting all the time and feeling like you need to just buy the $37 a mini product that's a content plan and you're just going to follow it and follow it and follow it and you're going to stay accountable to the spreadsheet, right? And if you stay accountable to the spreadsheet, then your whole world is going to change and everything's going to be good and you're going to be more powerful and your business is going to fill up. And here's the distinction I want you to feel from me is that being accountable to the plan is always going to fail. What you need to stay accountable to And this hooks into point number one about how I decide what to post based on the flow that I determine I need to adopt. You need to stay accountable to the energy of what you want to do. You need to stay accountable to the energy of the story you want to tell. You need to stay accountable to the actual feeling that you have and that you want to create in the world. That is what's going to allow you to release the feeling like you need to show up every day. That is going to give you permission to actually adopt the concept of flow in your content. And for those of you who are sitting there thinking that you hate launching, that traditional style of launching, this is what's going to let you release the need to launch. I will stand on the hilltops and say I have done an official guru-led marketing launch one time and I hated it. And if you want to know more about that, you can also head to my website under free resources and get the special private fo- podcast feed that I created called Find Your Content Flow. It's seven episodes just about this, just about what we're talking about right now. Finding your flow, unlocking it, and taking personal permission to let that be the guiding force in how you uh, create your story and how you create your strategy. Okay, so those are the two things I really want you to hear. How I decide what to post is purely based on the flow I create from where I am to where I want to be. And then the accountability piece is not an accountability to a calendar, to a plan, to a spreadsheet. The accountability is to the end energy I want to create, maintain, and feel. All right? And that should be the same for you. 
Now, I told you that the third piece of today is going to be how we track things because yes, we do need spreadsheets. As much as I say, (laughs) don't stay accountable to the spreadsheet, don't let it run your life, it's really good to track things. So I'm gonna tell you what are the spreadsheets that we use on a, in some cases, daily basis in the business so that when we're in those valleys, when the flow slows down, we actually have data to make decisions on. Remember in the past episode, I think it was uh, episode three of season two, we talked about how feelings are data. Might have been episode two, feelings are data, but you also actually need data, like numbers and metrics. So what we measure on a weekly basis is the following. How many new people subscribe to the AaronTrafford.com newsletter list. And there are a few ways that you can actually get on that list. And I like to see who comes in through which door, who comes in through which energetic flow. Are they coming in through 77 story props, which is a PDF download? Are they coming in through five days to better storytelling, which is the free mini video course delivered via email? Are they coming in via the private podcast feed? finding your content flow? Are they an audio learner? I like to see that. Or are they coming in because they're just straight up booking a call with me and you know jumping through all the hoops and they just wanna be in my world, right? So how are they coming in? We measure, we measure that uptake. Um, the other thing we measure are A, how many sales we're making. Uh, we measure uh, things like expenses and income and all of those normal business things. But we also measure things like how many DMs I sent, how many DMs we're receiving. Because for me, engagement doesn't mean anything. The outward engagement numbers, if how many people like my posts, how many people share my posts, those kinds of things don't matter to me. What matters to me is how close I was able to pull people into my sphere. So if they're DMing me or sometimes replying to my emails, um, or if you know I, I actually just get a, an email out of nowhere, we track that and we map that energetically to how I was showing up that week. If I was at my peak and I was showing up and I was like in my fire and I was sharing lots of stuff, usually that means my DMs start to light up. And that always gives me good information. So we track all of that. From the podcasting side, what do we track? We track downloads, of course. We, we look at which episodes did the best. We track drop-off, which episodes people did not like. But we also track the following, which episodes correlated to higher traffic to our website? Which episodes energetically created action? We track that. Without tracking, you just have feeling And with just tracking, you have no feeling. You need both. You need the story, the feeling, that ineffable essence, that flow, that flexibility, and you need the data. So that's what we have. We have multiple spreadsheets that do all of those things um, and track all of that data. On the blog side, we do the same thing. Like we track which blog posts get the highest click through, which get, you know, page one in Google, like all of those things. But I also run them through a lens of, did that blog post feel good to write? Where was I in my flow when I wrote that blog post? Nine times out of 10, if I'm at my peak, it felt really good to write, the post is gonna do really well. So that's what I want you to see today, behind the scenes of how I create my strategy. It's a very flexible, flowy thing, but it's working for me. And this is what we're gonna lead with going into next year. And I'd welcome your thoughts on this. How are you feeling about this whole concept of releasing accountability to a plan and engaging in accountability to your energy and the desire that you have to create? I I would love, love to know. So please direct message me or tag me on Instagram at its.aarontrafford or you can feel free to drop us an email team at aarontrafford.com. This episode of Permission to Leap is brought to you by Story and Strategy School, my next level mentorship program for digital entrepreneurs and creatives who wanna unlock their content flow to create meaningful movement in their business. In this six month program, chock full of my entire content strategy insider secrets, 
plus access to me, you will find the flow that matches your unique energy and business goals. And you'll create a converting content funnel to attract your ideal clients and customers. Whether you want to start or revive a blog, show up more strategically on social media, launch a podcast, or even get featured in the media, Story and Strategy School is where you get into the groove and stay accountable to the goal. To find out how you can enroll in Story and Strategy School and grab your first lesson for free, visit the link in the show notes or head to erintrafford.com slash story dash strategy dash school. This has been Permission to Leap, a podcast produced by me, Erin Trafford, with the support of Eye Contact Productions and Story Studio Network. Music for this podcast is supplied by archesaudio.com. If you love the show, please consider leaving me a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts because that goes a long way to helping other people find the show. And don't forget to follow along on Instagram at its.erintrafford and tag me with your takeaways and thoughts using hashtag permission to leap. Thanks for listening. Until next episode.